Hi guys, I trust you're well. Um, okay, I'll say this is the big one. This is the difficult one. This is the one that nobody really wants to hear. I have taken a bit too long to build up to this point because I know it's an unpopular doctrine. We all know it. We all know it. If we are children of God, we know it. But uh, we don't want to accept it. My previous videos spoke about you know, a message to men. This is a message to women. This is what God says. This is what the Bible says with respect to your marriage. I'm speaking specifically about marriage. There are other things that uh, you know are important, but um, this is what has been on my mind for this long, and I believe it has to be addressed critically and quickly. You know, um, what is this message to women? Where do I even begin? It's so simple and straightforward, yet I know we don't want to we don't want to hear it. I'll just go straight to First Peter chapter three, verse one through four, five. No, just the verse one is good enough anyway. A message for women, husbands. No, no, no. We've already spoken about that in one of our previous videos. Wives, be in subjection. To your own husbands so they're going to use that excuse so to be in subjection to another person's husband okay let's just get that out of the way being in subjection to your own husband as unto the lord so that if any obey not the word he can buy your converse i mean he, he can buy your attitude i forgot how it's, how it's said be be converted when he sees your conversation, the way you are behaving, without a word. Yeah. I would say without a word. Listen very carefully, madam. Listen very carefully. Let's go back to that line. So that if any obey not the word. You see, when we spoke about men, we talked about what God expects of the man owning up taking responsibility, loving his wife enough to die for her, taking any nonsense his wife gives to her, that's what God requires of, her, of him as a man. But the Bible says, even if he does not obey the word, you see, we, have, we live in a very strange world nowadays, a tit-for-tat world, where I want to say that because that person did not do this, so I will not do that. Because this person did not do that, so I will not do this. Because he, is not, he, is not, he doesn't love his wife. Because he doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't provide for his home. Because he is not making money. Because he is not, uh, because he's not, he's not, he's not productive. Because he's not loving, he's not caring, he's not sensitive, he's not emotional, he doesn't express himself. He's not, Whatever your excuse, he doesn't stay at home. He humanizes. He cheats on me. He beats me. That's a very hard one. Whatever your excuse, the Bible says, even if he does not do what I told him to do, without you talking back at him, when he sees the way you are behaving, that you still submit to him, that attitude is what is going to win him. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to illustrate this point by talking about my mother and my dad. And I ask their forgiveness that I share this story, but it's a testimony that the world needs to hear. When they got married in the 70s, 1970s, mom was a Christian, dad was not. Dad was a drunk. I don't remember who told me this, but I like to say it frequently. There's a difference between a drunk and a drunkard. A drunkard gets drunk regularly. A drunk is perpetually drunk. Dad, yeah, it was the latter. He was perpetually drunk all the time. Yeah, I wasn't born in stories that I was told. And um, my mom would cry and weep and lament. Here's the funny thing. She had gotten a message yeah, shortly before she met, weeks or months before she met my dad, that that was going to be her husband. And it was a very, it was a very, it was, it was a very real message. 
So she believed that this was her husband. But how could God have given her this strange man who had little regard for the word of God, whose, whose motto at the time was that all the prayer in the world cannot save you, and who was drinking his life into the gutter? Sometimes dad would get home at night and would not make him through the front door. He cared enough about, about, enough about her to get her to the church. But often he would drink himself so silly he wouldn't be able to get back to pick her up. And sometimes he would remember to come around, pick her up, drop her off at home, then go back to drink again. Now he was very hardworking, he was good at what he did. But when it came to the alcohol bottle, he, it wasn't a fight he was winning. That was my dad. And my mom would cry. And she would pray. And she would cry. And she would pray. Until one day she got a message from God and God said, stop praying. Stop asking for me to save him from drinking. Ask him, ask, ask me instead to let him know me. Listen, there's a very, very big and high gut wrenching story in there. Maybe I will share it in another video, but probably not right now. I don't want this video to be too, to be too long. But then through a series of events in which my mom almost died, pregnant from my elder brother. And my older brother literally died and came back to life. Listen, this thing we are doing here is not a story somebody told me, so to speak. It's an experience that I have had. Like I keep telling you, if you don't know God, you don't know him. You, it, is, it is not a book that we read. This is life that lives in my veins. This is truth that I know. I have seen God answer prayers. I have seen God do miracles. I can't even say them all. If you don't know God on that personal level, you don't have a relationship with him. If you don't have one of those relationships, start asking me now to give you one. You need it. Because the Bible says we overcame the devil by the blood of the lamp and by the word of our testimony. Oh, I'll add letter part later. And they love not their lives unto the death. Listen, the day my father got born again, nobody preached for him. He saw the miracle of my brother coming back to life and it was mind-boggling it was it was it was mind it shattering for him i repeat the day he got born again nobody preached for him he got born again very suddenly he gave up the bottle this has been i don't know 40 how many years now and that same man who was a slave to alcohol, today I can't, I don't know how many churches he has planted. I don't want to exaggerate, so I will not give a number. The man, the man prays now. How can I put it? <laughs> my mom cannot pray 10% of what my dad prays. And it's because of what I've seen God do, do in this man's life. That became the foundation for me finding God. Or God finding me. But what is the story there? She could have done something that a lot of modern day women do. She could have run away from the home. She could have run off to his parents or her parents and reported him. She could have made his life miserable. By being impossible in the house. No, what she did? She dropped on her knees and she prayed. And she prayed. And she prayed until she heard from God. And then she did what God asked her to do. And she won her husband through her obedience. This is a message to women. Madam, whatever reason you are giving yourself as an excuse to run away from your house, it is not good enough. The Bible says, even if he does not obey the word, he can true, he can without the word, that, that's the word I was looking for, he can without the word be converted by the conversation of the wife. When he beholds the way you are behaving, your chaste conversation, your behavior, your submission, your prayer, your relationship with God, as he is watching that, that will change him more than anything you can say. So all that nagging, it is not going to work. That is not what God designed. God designed for you to submit to this man and to help him. Oh, that brings another subject. I'll probably have to address it in another video. Okay? Oh, what, what God expects of you as a woman. But let's just start with this. Madam, whatever reason you are giving yourself to run away from your home, it's not good enough. I'm sorry. We're going to... Oh, yes. I will probably talk about divorce at some point. 
Oof, that's another difficult one. That's another difficult one. Listen, we are going to talk about this based on what the Bible says, and that's what it is. Take it or take it. The word of God will not change just because you don't want it to be. Just because you refuse to accept it. That's the beautiful thing about the word. What it says is what it says. It's not apologizing. That's what God says. What God requires of you as a madam, as a woman, love, I mean, submit to your husband. Respect him. The Bible uses the word reverence him. Treat him like he is God in your life. And in case you don't understand, God uses stronger words than even that. He said even if you make a vow to the binding of your own soul, if your husband vetoes it, it does not start. So if you like, go and make covenant with demons and devils. If your husband refuses it, it will not start. That's what the Bible says. Unless he doesn't know what his position is as a man. But that's not even your, your concern. Your concern the message for you as a wife today. Submit to your husband as if you are submitting to God. Help him. Oh, that's another story again. Do what is required of you. Treat him well. Then pray. And God will answer your prayers. If it is up to God to decide how to deal with the man if the man is not obeying him, very likely, if your behavior is complete, if your obedience is complete, God will touch the man's heart and transform him. Other things he can do, he can create a separation by himself. By himself, it's not up to you. Other things he can do, the man can die. You don't want that. You don't want to be a widow and a mother of children, a single parent. It's not, it's not, it's not fun, even though the world glorifies it today. Madam, this is what the Bible says. If you can find another passage that says something else, show it to me. If I am wrong, I'll take correction. Leave it in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video. If you have questions, ask. If you like the video, like it. More importantly, share. There are people who need to hear this word. Our churches are not preaching it. Our churches are preaching excuses for us to leave our homes. That's not what the Bible says. Oh, and this doctrine gets even deeper as we go further. May God bless you. Have a wonderful day.